All right, so what's up guys? Today we got a pretty exciting one. A lot of our customers have been hitting us up lately for getting the T51R mod done on their M340Is and A90 Supras. So in front of me, I actually have a comparison. This is a stock unit. So if you look closely, you can see that it's just a bare uh, compressor housing. And then you get the new one where it's all machine and you have these air pockets that are built within and machine inside the compressor housing. And what that does is when the air comes through the intake, it's compressed air goes through those channels and gives it that very high pitch wisp turbo noise that we all love. So specifically, we're installing on a client's car here. This is, I believe, a 2021 M340i, so obviously it is applicable. Right now, we're only offering these for the Gen 2 B58s, so M340i's, A90 Supras, uh, two port or six port, like I said, just because we're swapping the housing. And the way we do the service is, is customer comes in, we put this on, we take the stock housing, and then obviously now you have the T51R mod on the vehicle. We do have rotating cores, so we, we kind of do this a little differently. So we have cores that are coming in, and then obviously, you book a spot, pay a deposit, you get one of these, come in, the install takes about half a day. So it's pretty straightforward. The car's pretty hot, so standard procedure, we're letting the turbo and all of the hot side cool down right now. But we'll get you some clips on exactly how the install goes, and then afterwards, we'll get you some cool sound clips just so you know how it hears. Two big things that I do wanna address that are frequently asked questions when doing this mod. One, is it gonna hinder performance or is there any upkeep of whatnot? No, this mod specifically is just for sound and entertainment purposes only. And then as well as with that being said, with sound, uh, it does also depend on what intake system you run. For example, if you want this mod and you have a stock intake system, you're not gonna re really be able to hear it. If you have like a cold air intake, Aventuri intake, MST, all those other types of cold air intakes and free flowing brands, those are gonna amplify the noise and make sure and makes it you know sound a lot uh, louder. So keep those two things in mind when purchasing this mod through us, but we definitely got you covered. So underneath the engine bay, obviously you got all of the cold side components. So the first thing that we're gonna do is take off the intake, charge pipe, and everything in the front of the turbo, just so that we can get it exposed. So then if you come closer and you look in, in depth, obviously the turbo's right here uh, with the wastegate and everything um, connected to it. Yeah, all of this stuff's in the way. So we gotta be able to take out the intake, uh, all of the filters and whatnot, get this all accessible. And then once we have all of these uh, cold side pieces on, uh, we're gonna throw the fan on top of the car to make sure that the hot side, AKA the you know actual physical part of the turbo downpipe in that area is cool enough for us to be able to touch and disassemble. All right, so now diving deeper into it, uh, we have all of the cold side pieces off and then now that we have uh, the inlet pipe uh, that bolts onto the turbo off, we have access to which the other components that need to get removed, which are the uh, oil feed line and the coolant feed line. Uh, both of those brackets are hard lines, so they do need to come off. You can see them, they're located right here. So the oil feed line is gonna be right here and then the coolant bracket is gonna be up here. It's gonna also have a corresponding uh, bracket, the same looking line just on the opposite side, on the back side of the turbo, that you're gonna have to kind of finagle and feel, uh, but it's pretty straightforward. Um, and then other than that, the other things that we have to disassemble on the actual compressor housing itself are the uh, electronic wastegate. A couple of pointers when you're removing this, uh, do not mess with this uh, bolt right here because this is gonna be the tension uh, uh, of the load from the electronic wastegate, as well as when we are pulling this turbo compressor housing off. Technically with a two port, you don't have to remove the full turbo. You will have access to the bolts that the compressor housing, there's four bolts. There's one here on the back side of each corner. Just because this is a six port, you're not gonna have as much area. So that does require you to take off the turbo. But like I said, with this car specifically, once we get those lines off and the compressor housing and cold side separated, we'll be able to take the entire turbo off so that we could disassemble everything. Thank you. 
Okay, so now that we have the lines disconnected, both the oil and the uh, coolant feed lines, as well as disassembling the turbo from the V-band, we now can pull this off. <clears throat> and as you can see, we have to do a little bit of transferring. So what this entails, and also make sure that you are very careful. These are the blades of the turbo. You wanna be able to rest it on something so that you're not damaging anything. But you can see right here that <clears throat> the turbo housing is held on from this back part from four bolts. So they're obviously located right here, right here, right here. I believe these are T30s. Uh, so once we take those off, this compressor housing will be able to be separated and as easy as taking the new one and swapping it on, putting those bolts back on, and then pretty much the reverse process of everything that we've done thus far. Now just installing everything back on, the lines, the V-band. And then you could also see here that the turbo is marked, right? So we're gonna be able to label it from this side because we already pre-marked it to line up with uh, this section so that when we assemble it, it's already in the, the right angle for when we install it back onto the vehicle.